Hi, I'm Sam, the teen librarian at Bay County Public Library. March is Women's History Month, so we're going to talk about Mary Anning, one of the first paleontologists. Pictured on the left is a portrait of her, and on the right is one of her finds. After that, I will be showing you how to make homemade modeling clay and an ammonite fossil. So what is paleontology? It's the study of ancient life by examining fossil remains. According to the U.S. Forest Service, fossils are what's left of living things that died out many years ago and includes bones, teeth, shells, tracks, and plants. Mary Anning was born in Lyme Regis, England in the year 1799. She spent her whole life in this town, and its beaches and cliffs are where she found all of her fossils. Mary spent a lot of time collecting small fossils, or curiosities as they were called, to sell to tourists as part of her family's income. This was a dangerous living because boulders fell from cliffs and waves could sweep people away. The so-called curiosities she sold included ammonites, called snake stones at the time. According to National Geographic, ammonites were cephalopods, which is the same family that contains octopus, squid, and so forth and ammonites lived millions of years ago. Ammonite fossils were formed from their shells. In 1811, when Mary was just 12 years old, her brother discovered the skull of an ichthyosaur, a type of ancient marine reptile. Mary later found the rest of the creature. When her brother got a different job, she hunted for fossils on her own. In 1823, Mary discovered the first complete plesiosaur fossil, another ancient marine reptile. She made many other discoveries as well, including a type of pterosaur, or flying reptile, a type of fish believed to be a link between sharks and rays, and more. She eventually opened a shop in order to sell more fossils. In addition to her searching, Mary read books and learned about geology, animals, fish, and fossils. She also drew pictures of her finds. Despite all of her finds and her knowledge, she was not allowed to join the Geological Society of London at that time because she was a woman. She also couldn't take university classes or teach them. Despite this, scientists and scholars kept coming to her for answers. Today there is a museum in Lyme Regis that stands on the spot where Mary Anning's house once stood. Here are some book suggestions if you want to learn more about Mary Anning or prehistoric life. All of these are available from the Northwest Regional Library System for checkout. Okay, so we're going to be making our own ammonite fossils from homemade modeling clay. These are the ingredients you're going to need for the clay. You will need a half cup of cornstarch, one cup of baking soda, and about three-fourths cup of water. Okay, so we're going to get started making our modeling clay for our ammonite fossil. So you're going to need some kind of pot and something to stir with. So uh, we're going to need the ingredients that we mentioned before. So that's uh, one cup of baking soda. So we're going to put that in. Half a cup of cornstarch. and three-fourth cups of water, around three-four cups. So what we're gonna do is we're going to stir this on low to medium heat. Okay, you stir it up and it might take a little while but it should turn into a doughy consistency once it's warmed up and mixed together. Okay, you can see that it's starting to form a dough, but it's still liquidy, so we're not done yet. Just have patience, it does take a little while to form into a dough. Okay, you can see that it's now really starting to form a dough. So the next stage is going to be to let it cool off. I've got a bowl. I've got it on a hot pad, so I'm going to pour my dough into the bowl. Get it all out. You may have to suck your pan 
after you're done. So I've got my dough. So what you're going to do now is this needs to cool off. It's too hot to play with right now. So I'm going to take a wet towel and I'm going to lay it over the bowl. The wet towel keeps it moist. And we're just gonna let it cool off for a little bit, okay? Okay, it should have cooled off enough by now. So I'm gonna take my towel off. Okay, so here's our modeling clay. So I am going to now form an ammonite fossil. Or you can make whatever you'd like. Okay, so I'm gonna take out bit of the clay. Okay, I'm going to roll it up. Now I'm going to try and roll it out into a long line like a snake. I'm actually going to want it to be bigger on one end than on the other. So I'm going to try and make one side a little bit skinnier. It says that's going to be the inside of the spiral of the ammonite. do is I'm gonna start with the skinny end and we're gonna start curling it into a round spiral okay you can see how I'm starting just keep going you may have to stick some of your dough back together it might be a little stuck to the plate it's okay just kind of reform it when it does that. Okay. I've got a basic ammonite shape going on here. You can always make it longer and skinnier if you want to. Okay, I'm just kind of making it into making it into a nice round shape. Okay, we want it to be tightly woven, so when it dries, it'll be stuck together better. Now this end, the big end, is going to be the opening of the shell where the head would have come out of and the body. So I'm going to kind of make it flat looking. basic ammonite shape going on here. I'm going to take a butter knife and I can kind of get out some of the lumps. If you want you can kind of define the spiral shape a little bit better if, it, if your dough is starting to come together. So you can see that butter. Now I'm going to use the back part of the knife to make the ridges. Okay, so I'm just going to do these little ridges.
of a simple ammonite. So what you're going to do now is you're going to let this air dry. So um, it may take a few days. What you do is you let the top harden and, and make sure it's completely dry. And then you may have to flip it over and let the bottom dry too. Okay, so here are the finished ammonites. They dried after a few days. You can see I added some grooves on the side to make them more realistic. You can paint them if you want to, but they sparkle when they're unpainted too. Thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe.